Welcome to this episode of the Tokenizer's new series of the Token Regulator interviews. The Token Regulator is the Tokenizer's newly launched SaaS service. It's a global regulatory radar constantly scanning jurisdictions around the world and collecting data about regulatory news and changes within the token economy, especially the space of asset tokenization and security tokens. The token regulator was developed for professionals, people in this new industry, not least lawyers around the world and issuance companies, exchanges and companies running STOs. Today, I would like to welcome attorney at law and partner Elvia Tulvik from the law firm Magnussen in Estonia. Well, Magnussen is not only in Estonia, the company has offices across the Nordics and in all three Baltic countries. But today our focus will be on Estonia and what Magnussen is focusing on in Estonia. Uh, and again, not least within the token economy and the tokenization industry. So welcome Elvia and thank you so much for taking time out for this interview today. Could you uh, tell us a bit about uh, the profile of the Magnussen Law Firm. Right. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you for inviting me here and thanks for nature. Um, I am a partner with uh, Magnussen's Tallinn office and Magnussen is um, in a, a bit unique in the sense of its geography. It's uh, the only Baltic Nordic law firm that really covers all the countries around the Baltic Sea. Uh, we have offices in uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania on the one side, and then going up north uh, in Finland, Sweden, and uh, Denmark. Um, and we are uh, a, a full service business law firm. Mm -hmm. So we are oriented towards uh, mostly corporate clients, although not exclusively, of course. Um, and we offer them a full spectrum of business services, starting from corporate and commercial um, down to tax and deployment and even white collar crime, um, mm -hmm. which is also related to uh, uh, to my uh, area of, of law. I'm the head of uh, technology and regulatory uh, in Magnuson Tallinn. And since Magnuson um, also perhaps uniquely is extremely integrated across all our offices, um, we all know each other as people, we all know um, each other as lawyers, uh, and we do things together a lot, then all Magnuson offices also are connected through uh, their law area, which means that in addition to being head of uh, technology and regulatory in the Italian office, I'm also part of the Magnuson wide technology law. Um, well, we call them hubs, technology law hub. Regarding token economy, yes, this is uh, of course nothing new. Um, we started seeing those things, um, I don't know, back in 2017, perhaps 16 even. Yeah. Um, and it started out as a big bang because the uh, the uh, idea was that now everything is going to move to blockchain and we're going to forget about fiat or, or real money and, and everything is going to be through bitcoins and ethereum. Um, well, um, we're still here with, with, with paper money even sometimes and uh, not everything is on blockchain but um, still token um, tokenomics they call it officially mm -hmm. it's uh it, it hasn't gone anywhere it's developing it's becoming more and more sophisticated and uh, with it becoming more and more sophisticated we as lawyers also face a lot of challenges because this is um uh, quite directly speaking a, a new thing and uh, trying to regulate it with the old law uh, sometimes means, you know, putting together apples and oranges and um, <laughs> yeah. you don't really know what, what's going to come up in the end. Um, it's extremely exciting for a lawyer to be part of this right now because uh, some of it is creating the law as we go. Mm. Um, and it's really, really awesome. Yeah, exactly. There's so so much happening in, in, in this uh, space. So, uh, so it's really... It's it's hard to keep up with uh, with all the developments. Uh, 
what 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 are the the, the most uh, significant thing right now in terms of uh, new de developments especially on the regulatory side of things in uh, in Estonia could you could you point out uh, one or two things maybe where you would think that we are as a country uh, taking the lead or, or or doing some really interesting regulatory uh, legal things uh, currently mm, you know uh, I wouldn't say that we are sort of um, we, we have um, uh, created new law or anything like that I think that in practice what uh, my clients at least point out about Estonia why they come here at all and why they stay here and why they move here um, is the fact that Estonia is regulated so um, you know this regulation may not be ideal um, it may not be 150% suited for, you know, every new step that uh, tokenomics take, but it's there. So uh, that makes business predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, since there are quite short communication lines yeah. with uh, the regulator, uh, with the banks, with uh, the engineers, um, uh, with the lawyers and so on and so forth, things move fast things move easy uh, there is always um, a possibility to uh, discuss uh, a new idea a new development sort of uh, off the record or uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a free environment so things move forward I think this is uh, this is the best thing about about Estonian regulatory uh, climate with regards to tokenomics right now mm -hmm. but first of all there is some sort of a skeleton uh, according to which, when a business just arrives and starts scouting around, I can more or less tell them what's going to happen mm -hmm. with, you know, 80, 90% certainty um, at how they're going to be regulated. And then the other thing, if if there is something um, that that is out of that regulatory box, we can go ahead and discuss it and find some sort of a solution for it quite quickly. What you say is that people come to Estonia because uh, you actually regulate it, so it's it's easy, easy it's relatively easy to find your way around, and and uh, that's exactly what I uh, have seen as well. That it's not uh, anymore like it was in uh, in the early days of the ICO craziness, where people try to avoid uh, regulation and kind of fly uh, under the radar. It's uh, it's quite opposite today. Uh, I think uh, companies, um, legal entities that want to go into this uh, space, they are looking for clarity, uh, and they they just they just want to know how to be regulated, how to follow uh, the laws and 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 the rules and so on. Is is that what you see as well? Um, yes, and and it makes me very happy because that sort of. Um, aligns us very nicely with our clients um, our corporate values our ethical values our, our environmental goals um, corporate social responsibility all those things um, this is what we strive for um, a, a, you know transparent regulated business and we love to see that our clients are looking for the same thing um, it's it's really very neat Re regarding uh, clarity as uh, we just talked about uh, that's exactly why we uh, developed the the token regulator because there's a uh, there's a huge uh, need for for clarity not least uh, across jurisdictions uh, one thing is that in in some some islands like Estonia it's uh, uh, there's a, a quite clear picture when it comes to comes to uh, the regulatory side of things but that's definitely not the case in in many many other countries uh, so so an easy uh, an easy overview more clarity is 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 needed i believe um, if we take a, a look at what you are actually doing and come maybe mention some examples if that's possible or just some categories of uh, of clients, you say that clients come to you because they have certain needs. Uh, what what kind of uh, clients are you uh, are you serv uh, servicing within the within the token industry? Are you involved in uh, uh, SEOs uh, currently? Are you helping 
uh, asset owners uh, and uh, how, how is that? Wow, well, that's uh, that's a million dollar question because you're basically asking me to uh, to build a model of the universe. Our clients are uh, <laughs> um, all over the board. Um, we have uh, anything from private persons mm -hmm. to uh, large international groups and everything in between. Um, anybody who um, um, wants to have anything to do with blockchain, basically, uh, in most cases, end up playing around with tokens. And considering that this topic is not new and considering how um, uh, how the US regulator has approached it from their beginning, being more Catholic than the Pope, basically, um, <laughs> every token issue, um, or well, not every, but most of them turn out to be a security token issue. Yeah. Uh, so don't, like I said before, we're not, we haven't long talked about IPOs. It's, it's, it's always STO at the end of the day. Um, and the way this is done in Estonia is the regulation uh, uh, that was used as a model is um, um, a classical um, um, IPO regulation, which is a banking and finance field type of um, um, uh, affair. And uh, we just sort of superpose it on um, uh, on, on considering the nuances that come uh, come with the blockchain. So in addition to technology lawyers, this actually involves our backing and finance teams uh, quite heavily um, because they've been doing this for, for you know, for decades. Um, and then our role in this is to educate them as to uh, how uh, issuing um, crypto tokens is different yeah. and acquiring crypto tokens is different from uh, uh, issuing money and acquiring money mm -hmm. or uh, monetized assets um, because there are differences um, in, in the way uh, crypto tokens work in uh, what you get in return in what you actually have at the end of the day because mm -hmm. you know a, a crypto token is not a thing no. Um, at the end of the day you may or may not be able to exchange it for a thing you know it's just something that is totally well, so to say made up so there are differences considering to uh, comparing to classical law and uh, so we work with banking and finance a lot on this mm -hmm. um, and regarding our clients um, geographically uh, it's mostly uh, Western Europe and America mm -hmm. uh, both uh, North and South America mm -hmm. Um, and there's lots of Singapore, yeah. uh, used to be quite a lot of Indian clients, although mm -hmm. that has sort of slowed down, uh, mm -hmm. but mostly, uh, mostly it's uh, Western Europe and America. Mm -hmm. And they come here precisely for the reason that the regulation in their home countries is uh, either non-existent, mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, uh, very unclear. So you mm. cannot really plan your business ahead three to five years. You don't know what's going to happen. Mm. Um, and, and, and that's what they like here. So we, we are part of the European Union. We're in the Eurozone. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of law is, uh, if not coordinated with the rest of, uh, with the rest of Europe, that is similar on, on, on similar you know, Roman law basis and so on. Um, so, uh, so this is what we, we work with. Okay, so uh, uh, a broad variation or variety of uh, of clients and client types and tasks that you are solving. That's really interesting. Um, in terms of uh, numbers, when it comes to uh, to STOs, do you, do you have a a, 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 a total of uh, completed STOs in Estonia so far and uh, how much do you expect uh, these numbers to to increase uh, going forward? Um, I don't have a number of completed STOs. What I know is that um, uh, perhaps contrary to, to the popular opinion, uh, it's not, it's definitely not billions because no. it's an STO is a difficult and a lengthy process yeah. yes. uh, and expensive, mm -hmm. extremely expensive for one. Uh, for another is that um, Estonia uh, has one major flaw that perhaps 
puts a stop on uh, on a lot of processes that could have otherwise taken place and that as well i said flaw it's you know it's a it's it's um, a curse and a blessing at the same time but uh, we learned such a painful lesson from the money laundering scandal with the uh, danske bank um, oh, yeah. uh, from five seven years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. that the um, the banking sector became extremely 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 conservative uh, everything that has um non-domestic uh, foreign element to the corporate structure um, raises red flags immediately mm -hmm. so it is extremely difficult for um, for an Estonian business to uh, open a bank account here mm -hmm. or to move money around in any uh, significant way uh, and even if this can be solved well, you know, sometimes you don't need to move the money around if you're in the blockchain business, you you use blockchain. Uh, however, since uh, in case of a security token offering, there are certain requirements uh, for the uh, corporate form and for the amount of equity that needs to go through a bank, then that cannot always be avoided. Hmm. So um, banking issues are differently uh, def uh, definitely a, a, a damper a serious damper on uh, on the amount of business that can go through here um, and it is quite certain that if a business is not actually um, established in Estonia you know with a fixed place of business with an yeah. office and a couple of employees yeah. um, it is very very likely that uh, they're not going to get a bank account okay. and it is not just Estonia but uh, a lot of countries in the European yeah. Union yeah. Um, do this more and more often lately yeah. Mm -hmm. So I cannot say that the amount of STOs is skyrocketing. Mm. So so even though uh, uh, Estonia is is uh, a country where it's relatively easy or at least uh, regulatory clarity is there, there are still some challenges, challenges and still some barriers that uh, needs uh, need to be overcome. And you're also saying that. Making an SEO today is uh, is 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 not a cheap thing to do. It's not an, a very easy thing to do. But it's not. Uh, it, it is in the sense of uh, our, our understanding of the law. Mm -hmm. But it's not in the sense that you have to. If you are in a, a foreign, well, let us say, investor or business, you have to work with uh, with three things here. One is the financial regulator. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is specifically regarding the STO. Mm -hmm. Another one is the Anti-Money Laundering Authority, which is in Estonia is very young and is learning by doing. Um, but um, a business will spend a considerable amount of time explaining themselves to the uh, Anti-Money Laundering Authority. And the third is the bank. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, once these obstacles are overcome, uh, the bank being the first one of them, Mm. Everything else is smooth sailing, mm. Mm. and uh, it would be uh, easiest to actually establish the business in Estonia, have some mm -hmm. substance here, mm -hmm. um, and then everything becomes so much more easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's a basic requirement, more or less. It's it's not a requirement, but this is like um, yeah, a, a foundation for yeah. uh, for successful business um, uh, further on. But but what. Uh, besides that, what is needed to overcome these uh, barriers? What is needed to to get perhaps a a, a better understanding with the, the the banking sector to to quite perhaps make them understand that uh, uh, STOs and security tokens are regulated uh, uh, territory. So uh, so perhaps as uh, not that much of a need of being very scared. Uh, actually, the 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 old world in some ways is perhaps more dangerous, as we saw with this scandal scandal that you referred to. Well, what is needed to to get a better understanding, uh, a better com communication, perhaps with the banking sector? I think the banking sector is not afraid of the STOs. The banking sector is afraid of where this money came from in the first place mm. and especially considering crypto mm. uh, it is very well it, it's very essence it's not of course uh, you know in the beginning it was said that uh, 
uh, you cannot track it. It's untrackable. Of course, it's trackable, but mm. um, it's trackable if one actually applies forensics and if if if, if one's goal is to track it, um, which on the blockchain is genuinely not. So it's not quite clearly evident for a bank where the uh, the finance the financing comes from in the first place. This is what they're worried about. Because the bank knows that if at the end of the day it comes out that uh, there was money laundering involved yep. sometime in the past at you know at, at any point of that journey, then the bank is going to be fined so hard that they may cease to exist. Yeah, uh, and they're extremely afraid of that. Yeah. So if if uh, if the uh, uh, business involved in the STO or in this uh, uh, in whatever form it wants to to run its token business in Estonia has a very good detailed clean proof mm -hmm. and history of where mm -hmm. the assets came from you know from mm -hmm. from the times of King Solomon mm -hmm. and uh, that helps things a lot but that's not usually the case okay yeah so uh so what you're saying is it's it's also very much up to to the businesses actually to make sure that they uh, know who they are onboarding and where they get their uh, investors investor money from who they are selling their tokens to basically uh, to make sure that uh, their own uh, journey becomes easier when it comes to uh, securing that they are not involved in any kind of money laundering absolutely and uh, and this will also help their relationship with the anti-money laundering authority along um uh, greatly but again you know you and i are sitting here and talking theory in theory everything is clear and doable uh yeah. in practice some things especially uh relating to blockchain especially relating to tokens uh it's not that easy at all mm. Mm. So dis dis despite these uh, barriers and challenges, uh, if we take a look uh, from now into the, the near future, let's see, let's say uh, just two or three years, how do you see the further development, and and where do you uh, uh, where do you see your 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 own role as a company, also as a law firm, and how can you uh, take part in this? development and make it a more smooth uh, journey for for companies that want to uh, utilize the, the, the new uh, options that the, the token economy and tokenomics um, uh, offer? Well, um, as in case of any sort of new development that requires new legal approaches, um regulators in different countries look to each other a lot really a lot for for new ideas for best practices for you know how does my neighbor handle this and um we as magnuson we usually we're so used to draw from our unique geography um to solve issues like that uh, because this is where you know the magnuson technology law hub uh gets together regularly and we say okay we have this problem on the table and then we can go and start at least looking for answers in all our jurisdictions. And then when we have an, a, a best idea or our own idea, then we can go and start talking to the regulator in, in all our jurisdictions, saying yeah. that, uh, look, there's a solution. And also the Estonians are talking about it. And also, you know, the Swedes are talking about it. And also the Finns are talking about it. So can we perhaps all get together and, uh, uh, you know, put this into law? And uh, uh, so this is definitely something that uh, we're used to do, that we're good at, and that practically works instead of, you know, sitting here and waiting uh, mm -hmm. when after 20 years, uh, somebody's going to write a textbook mm -hmm. on this. Um, uh, where this, this whole industry is going to go, um, I think one of the reasons it has not um, sort of spiraled vertically in its uh, volumes, at least not in mm. Europe, mm. It's because um, the blockchain and the tokens, uh, at least in my opinion, are this very interesting phenomenon of a tool or a thing appearing before its purpose. So mm. now we have this technology, 
and it's really cool um, and it's really nice to play around with but nobody still has a very solid idea of what you know what world problems it's going to solve what exactly is it there for mm. and i think until these two things come together this mm. technology as such and this really deep important world purpose for it uh, it's going to go slowly mm. uh, but once those two connect mm. i think it's just going to go boom yeah i totally i totally agree uh, but, but but i think that uh one of the best uh suggestions for what could make it go boom uh, is uh, within asset tokenization uh, but uh, regulation is uh, crucial to actually make that happen um absolutely mm. and uh, ideally this regulation would be something that uh, most of the countries adopt in more or less similar fashion because mm. token tokenomics is uh, by its nature not a national phenomenon yeah. um it transcends borders it just doesn't recognize borders it transcends yeah. currencies it tra it transcends the idea of a state uh, you know yeah. in 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 everything in in just its nature so it's really not going to work to keep regulating it uh on a national level this has to be something more or less universally understood and accepted like i don't know like traffic rules or rules of navigation something yeah. like that yeah it's probably going to take a, a while but probably not as long as previously because the law itself is changing um with the advance of technology and the understanding of how fast things need to go is also quite different now than it was 20 years ago yeah uh, i i think you're right and uh and when talking about that maybe we should uh, mention just uh or, or just have your comment on what's going on on uh, an uh, EU level, because as far as I see, the Commission is actually uh, surprisingly active in uh, in mm -hmm. the uh, uh, token space and also when it comes to asset tokenization. Do you have any uh, any comments on that? Something you like or or or, or, or dislike uh, in in mm. that regard? I can't really say that there is something I feel emotional about. Something I can no. say, you know, I like this or dislike that. But um, the regulation that's coming uh, down from the Commission so far um, is normal, is usually on more on the money laundering side. There's a mm. lot on the money laundering side, um, but there there isn't much on the um, uh, on the material law of tokenization. Um, and I think it's partly due to the fact that we are. Um, this is sort of like a no man's territory we know for example that um indirect tax is uh, harmonized in the european mm. union we know that civil law is not um where the token falls uh we really don't there is no mm. consensus in that um and and therefore the european the european commission cannot um really pass anything uh, uh groundbreaking down so, so we still have a lot of uh, basic work to 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 do when it comes to uh, fundamental uh, definitions uh, and things like that. We have uh, we have lots of bricks, I would say, yeah. on the European level and even on the international level, but we don't have the foundation. We don't have mm. this uh, uh, basic understanding of whether we are talking international law, whether we are talking national law, whether we are talking EU law. Um, and how much of these bricks are going to lay on that common foundation mm -hmm. and how much is going to be left to uh, to ind individual nations mm -hmm. so right now it's just a pile of bricks yes mm -hmm. so still uh, still quite a lot of work to to do there as well <laughs> um as i as i understand it you are involved in many uh, different projects with big clients and smaller clients but if you have a, a really large uh, company that wants to do something in this space how, how do magnuson handle such a situation such such a case well that's a that, that's quite a routine situation for us we have that uh, we do that a lot and uh, usually those large projects are multinational as well they involve several offices from magnuson and the way we work is that we um, man our legal teams with uh, people from all jurisdictions and with people 
from uh, dealing with all areas of law that are or even potentially may be involved. So, for example, if I have a technology law project that involves um, Estonia, Finland and Denmark, mm -hmm. uh, then I would have the lawyers from Finland and Denmark in my team as well. And we would include uh, technology law people, we would include banking and finance, we would include tax, um, we perhaps would include corporate uh, mm -hmm. and commercial who draft agreements. And uh, a lot of the times we end up at some point including our um, uh, blockchain forensics teams. This is also one of the things that Magnuson does and uh, and we're sort of uh, ahead of the curve in that and we're really good at it. We have learned to track um, assets on blockchain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that when our clients, for example, are uh, in trouble with their uh, blockchain investment, with their token mm -hmm. investment, then uh, we can track those assets for them and recover them in many cases. Okay. Okay. That's a very important thing to be able to do to, to help your clients with, I can imagine. And there is some really neat um, uh, technical knowledge behind it. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a very, very, very interesting area of law. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, interesting. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's good to hear that you are working closely together across, uh, across uh, countries, so you really utilize the uh, the fact that you are uh, uh, covering both uh, the Nordics and, uh, and the Baltics. We also work, of course, with, uh, with other countries as well, with uh, Germany and uh, okay. uh, Norway and Poland and the US and the UK. We uh, have our sort of best friends there, who are uh, legal firms that uh, have more or less the same orientation with us. So our multinational product projects are not just the uh, Nordics and Baltics; they're really global sometimes. Yeah, sure. That 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 makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Elvia, for participating in uh, today's interview, and uh, thank you to the viewers of this episode of the Token Regulator interview brought to you by the Tokenizer. We will be back soon with uh, yet another episode and with uh, a new exciting legal expert as guest. Uh, meanwhile, please visit the tokenizer and check out the token regrader on regrader.thetokenizer.io. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Michael, from myself and from Magnuson. <laughs>